In this lecture, we're going to build our first element, which will be a timer. So the timer is going to be a text object, and it will be in the format of 0000, showing us the minutes and the seconds that the timer has remaining. Before we jump into this video, go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership and get access to all of the courses we've ever created. That's over 2,000 hours of content. Let's increase the size of this text by giving it a font property. So we're appending here font. We're going to use the system font and let's set its size to 50. Okay, then we can wait a moment and look at that. In our preview now, that text has gotten a lot larger. So feel free to make it as large as you need to be able to see. Okay, so we have 0000. zero, zero, zero. Now, how do we actually convert this into a time? Well, we are going to use a variable instead of putting in this literal string. So to put in a variable here, we can pass in something like a time remaining string. Okay, so this will be a variable that we have to create. So let's go ahead and create a variable. We're going to create it inside of our struct, but not inside of the body. It is going to be a state variable, and it is going to be called time remaining. We can here take a string and pass in some number like three. Let's say we start the count at three seconds. This has to be a state variable because its value is going to change and we have to be able to tell the app to listen for changes to the variable, which it will because this variable is a state variable. Now just wait a minute and you'll be able to see three will appear in your app because now instead of showing zero zero colon zero zero, we are showing three, three seconds remaining. But how do we actually convert this three into the format zero zero colon zero zero. Okay, what we're going to do is build a function. We'll call this convert seconds to time. And here we're going to pass in some seconds as an integer. And we're going to return a string which will take the seconds and format them into the minute colon second. So three seconds should be zero zero colon zero three. Okay, we can already test this out by returning here something random like 00, zero colon zero 05 just to make sure that the function was created because this function has to return a string because that's what we specified. So hit command S to save the file or resume your preview. And instead of showing the time remaining, we can actually here call convert seconds to time and pass in for the seconds parameter the time remaining state variable but that means we do have to convert the time remaining state variable to a integer because now that's what the function requires it requires us to put in an integer okay great so here just wait a moment for the preview to update and we will see in the preview our literal string 00, zero colon zero 05 because although we passed in the seconds to the function the function is not actually doing anything with the seconds yet. Okay, there we go. You can refresh the preview a couple times if it doesn't update immediately. And now you can see 0, 0, colon 0, 05. Okay, now how do we take a number of seconds and convert it to the format, this format of minutes, colon, seconds? Well, we can use some math for this. First, let's grab the seconds. To grab the seconds, we will take here the seconds that were passed in and we are going to use modulo 60. So just be careful here because it's kind of confusing to have a variable called seconds and a parameter called seconds. So this parameter is your time in seconds. So we can call this time in seconds instead of seconds. Your total time in seconds. So we have to change wherever we here reference the parameter, we have to change its name. Okay, so we just change this to time in seconds. And then we're getting the seconds from the time in seconds. So if we had, for example, 5 minutes and 30 seconds, we would get the 30 here. We do this by using 
something known as the modulo or modulus operator. It's a percentage sign. And this operator gives us the remainder of something. So let's say we had 60 seconds as the time in seconds. Well, that is one minute exactly. So if we had 60 seconds and we did 60 modulo 60, we'd get a remainder of zero because 60 divided by 60 is one with zero remainder. So we'd get zero seconds because 60 seconds is one minute and zero seconds. But if we had 61 seconds, then when we did 61 modulo 60, we would get a result of one because the remainder of 61 divided by 60 is 1. The remainder is whatever is left over after you get the result of a division and you want that division to get you a whole number. So we can test this out by returning here our seconds okay and we have to convert that to a string. So let's just return a string passing in our seconds. Okay so now we're going to be putting this to use Okay, there we go. Now in this case we get three return because we have three seconds. And the warning should be removed after a moment. You just have to wait for it to go. You can also file and save because we are indeed using this seconds. Okay, let's say we passed in something different. Let's say we had a time remaining of 60 as I mentioned. Okay, then let's wait for the preview to update. We can refresh the preview by clicking resume. And this time, we'll actually see our seconds here will be zero. There we go. We see zero because if we pass in 60 to this function, convert seconds to time, where you have the time in seconds, well, 60 seconds is one minute. There's no seconds left over. But what if we had 61? Then in that case, we'll see one. Let's just resume our preview. We will see one appear because in that case, there is going to be a remainder of one one second. 61 seconds is one minute and one second. So that's how we can get the seconds. Now what about the minutes? Well to get the minutes we can take our time in seconds, remember that's the total time, and we can divide it by 60 and that will give us some number like if we had here 61 and then we divided it by 60. Well, in that case, we would get 1.1. So we can test this out by returning the minutes converted to a string here. And let's see what we get in our preview. OK, in this case, we get a 1. We don't even get the 0.1. So it looks like it just ignored the decimal. So and if we change that to 62, we can resume our preview and check this out. OK. and will still likely get 1. It will take the 62 and it will divide it by 60. Now what if we had 120? Well 120 seconds is 2 minutes. So in this case we should now see a 2 because we now have 2 minutes represented and we're returning our minutes. Okay great so we do see this. So we know how to get the seconds and we know how to get the minutes from a total time represented in seconds. And we learned that we could do that just by using math and logic. Now, how do we put these two together to get our format of the minutes colon the seconds with a zero in front? OK, what we can do here is instead of passing in the minutes directly or the seconds directly, we use a format first, a format parameter to our string, to our casting of a string. The format that we're going to use is percentage sign 0 to i and then percentage sign 0 to i. Okay, so you'll notice your preview will already change. Here we can see we're going to be putting a 0 in front of the number and we are going to display the number. And here we have two cases of this because we're going to pass in the minutes and the seconds. So we have three parameters, first the format and then the values. And here we have two values because we have two instances of how we want to format this stuff. So here we can see we have 0, 02 colon 00, 00 because we have 120 seconds. Let's say we made this 61. If our time remaining is 61 seconds in total, we're going to format that instead to show us 
one minute and one second. Awesome, there we go, we have one minute and one second. 62, we'll see one minute and two seconds. Okay, so now we know how to show some time, okay, converting a total seconds to time. Now, how do we actually build a timer? Okay, so for that, we'll need another variable at the top here. We are going to create a variable called timer, and we'll use the timer object from SwiftUI. The syntax is to call the publish function. We want to publish every one second and on dot main. So if you change how here, how the every parameter is, so if you change this to two, that is going to make the timer slower. So you can make the timer slower or faster, but we're just going to have a regular timer going by regular time. We want this on the main thread in common, and then we can close that parenthesis. And I'm also going to add auto connect so that the timer will immediately connect. Okay, let's go ahead and refresh the preview. Now we won't actually see anything because we're not using this timer. So how do we put this timer to use? Well, for that, we are going to go into our body, our view here for the content view body. And here we can see we're passing in a call to convert seconds to time, passing in the time remaining. And here we are going to use our timer. So we are going to append onto this and on receive. So we'll say when we receive our timer value, we can change something, like we can change our state variable. So this is the syntax for receiving the timer. And when the timer is ticking, for every second that it ticks, we're going to decrease the value of our time remaining. So I'll take time remaining and I'm going to decrease it by one. Okay, there we go. So that is how you can set up a timer. And if you click your preview play button here, you'll notice that our timer appears to be stuck at 0102. That is because here, let's see, we have time remaining 62. Our timer is publishing every one second. We have it auto connecting. And then we're converting the time in seconds. Okay, and we're passing in the time remaining. Whenever the timer is received, we are going to be reducing the value of time remaining by one. The logic looks good. It's just that sometimes with Swift UI, it can have trouble if you don't have your elements in a stack, even though we only have one element in our view. It's still best practice to put your elements into some kind of stack, a vertical stack, horizontal stack, or Z stack. Even if you just have one element, if you put it into a vertical stack here, for example, then we can press play on our preview, that play button. And now look at that, our timer will start counting down. Awesome, so there we go. We have been able to build out a timer where we pass in some seconds and then we can count down easily. Every one second, our timer is counting down. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited Membership where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.